What's your name, buddy? Are you here to buy some medicine? Where are your mom and dad? Are you lost? No, I'm not. Um, my name's Ayu, and I'm here because... Hey there, Chi-Chi. Hi, Gwei. What's going on? Hi, Traveler and Paimon. Ah, uh, you've actually come at the perfect time. This little boy seems to have gotten himself lost. I think he must be new to the city. Probably wandered away from his parents and... No, listen to me. I'm not the one who's lost. It's my dad. Your dad? How does a fully grown man manage to get lost in Leeway Harbor? Well, my dad's always been kind of forgetful. In the past, he was just a little slow to react sometimes. But I'm worried that it's getting more serious. So, what about your mom? She went out a few days ago to gather some herbs for my dad, but she still hasn't come back. Meanwhile, my dad's been getting worse and worse. I remember that the owner of Boo Boo Pharmacy always runs a clinic in Chingsa Village during the Lantern Rite. So I thought, why don't I take dad to Liyue Harbor to see him there? When we got to the city gate, I took a moment to ask the middle lift guards for directions to the pharmacy. And then, when I turned back around, my dad was gone! I asked the Millith guys to go find him, but he said they won't be able to send that many people. So then I figured, maybe I can ask some other people in the city to help. You came to the right place. We're pros at finding people. Isn't that right, Traveler? Changshan can help. She has a good sense of smell, like a dog. Hey! Who's talking about me behind my back? Cheng Sheng, Chi Chi meant that as a compliment. There's no need to be upset. Hello, child. You mentioned that you were looking for the owner of Boo Boo Pharmacy. How might we be of service? You have a talking snake? Oh, are you Uncle Baiju? <laughs> Uncle Baiju? Cheng Sheng, now's not the time. My dear boy, could you tell me more about your father's condition, as much as you can recall? Yes, Uncle... Uh, Dr. Baiju. I see. And your family lives near Chingsa Village, you say? I visit patients there frequently, but I don't recall ever seeing you or your parents. Uh-huh. My mom doesn't like meeting other people, especially during Lantern Rite. She always tells me to just stay at home and keep my dad company. Hmm, is that so? Are you? By any chance, is your mother's name Jiang Li? Whoa, yeah, it is. Do you know my mom, Dr. Baiju? I certainly do. Gui, Chi Chi, are there any pressing matters in the pharmacy at the moment? Ayu's parents are old acquaintances of mine, so I would very much like to assist with the search. Would the two of you have time to join me? Oh, really? Well, that's wonderful. We are most grateful for your support. Chi-Chi and I need to clear up the shop front first, but once that's taken care of, we'll be right out to help you with the search. Family is very important. Thank you. Then I'll leave you to handle the pharmacy. Traveler, Paimon, why don't you come with me and Ayu? Let's start by talking to the Millilith guards at the city gates, see if they have an update. Mind the side effects. They searched to the north, but couldn't find anyone who matched the description. <sighs> well, that complicates things. In the city... Excuse me, sirs. Have you found out anything about my dad yet? Ah, uh, hey there, buddy. Dr. Baiju. What brings you out this way? The boy asked for our help, so we're here to join the search. Any new developments to update us on? Oh, thank goodness. We were just discussing how we're running out of manpower. As for updates... I'm sorry to say that we've searched the surrounding area thoroughly, but didn't find anything. The guards at the crossing up ahead said they hadn't seen anyone either, so we don't believe he was heading towards the Gwaley Plains. But it is possible that he was bound for Luhua Pool. 
Luhua Pool? The terrain there can be tricky to navigate. Let's hope he hasn't run into any trouble. You will? Ah, oh, great. We can't thank you enough. Sorry we weren't able to find your dad, buddy. That's okay. Thank you for trying. Customer, Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor does appreciate your patronage, but you needn't hasten the inevitable. Are you all right? Uh, uh. Huh? Dad! Hey, Hotel! My, my, who do we have here? Mm -hmm. It's the Traveler in Paimon, and... Uh, my worst nightmare. <laughs> I see she still hasn't warmed to you. <laughs> Thank you, Director Hu, for saving this man. Dad, are you okay? Uh, do you recognize me? It's me, Ayu. Uh, uh, you're Ayu? Uh, 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 who am I? Your name is Jia Liang, and you live just west of Chingsa Village. You were supposed to come to Liyue Harbor to see the doctor. Remember? That jog your memory? Oh, uh, uh, my name is Jia Liang. Uh, Liyue Harbor. See the doctor? Uh, yes, yes, I I'm Jia Liang, and I need to see the doctor. Wait, uh, why do I need to see the doctor? Uh-oh. He seems in really bad shape. We need to get him back to Boo Boo Pharmacy right away. Sorry, Hotel. Got a dash. Dinner's on us next time. Hold on a second. You're not seriously thinking of taking him to Boo Boo Pharmacy in this state, are you? Huh? Why not? What's the problem? Come on, Baiju. Don't tell me you haven't noticed it. Didn't your master teach you how to spot the signs? Why do I get the sense that you spotted them right away, but you're planning to use it for your own ends? <laughs> use what? What are you talking about? Uh, Paimon's lost. There are traces of god remains in Jia Liang's system. Oh, yes, but more importantly, they're on the verge of an outburst. If that happens, the consequences will be unthinkable. Paimon, sorry, what? G God remains? Hmm. There's no need to worry, Director Hu. I have methods of keeping them at bay. It is the sworn duty of all who practice medicine to cure illnesses and save lives. What reason would I have to neglect a patient in need who is right there in front of me? Besides, it was my late master's dying wish to be able to save this patient in particular. Perhaps out of respect for him, you could give me a day's grace so that I have time to treat him? Now you're bringing my great uncle into this? Baiju, just what are you planning this time? <sighs> Merely to cure this man, nothing more. But of course, if you have any doubt as to my intentions, you are more than welcome to accompany me to Boo Boo Pharmacy and monitor my activities. Oh, really? I thought I was persona non grata at Boo Boo Pharmacy. You're being unusually generous today. Okay, deal. We're not gonna solve anything by keeping Jia Liang here. I'm happy to do it your way, but... only for my great uncle's sake and the Traveler's, of course. You must be pleased you brought the Traveler along. Otherwise, 
This would have been a much more vexing ordeal. Well, time is of the essence. Let's get ourselves back to Boo Boo Pharmacy at once. Hmm, blockages within the cardiovascular system... Reduced blood flow and energy circulation? I see. I suppose this must have caused the cognitive abnormalities. Dr. Baiju, how bad is it? Can you cure him? Don't you worry. Baiju's a really great doctor. He's sure to find a way. Isn't that right, Baiju? Ayu, do you know when your father first started displaying these symptoms? Um, I'm not sure. He's been like this for as long as I can remember. But it wasn't as bad as this when I was still little. Hmm. So it's been a long time indeed. No. I have a treatment plan in mind. We can start tonight. Come and see me again tomorrow morning. I promise that by then, Ayu will find his father healthy and lucid again. Thank you, Dr. Baiju. Thank you so much. If you still have any misgivings, Director Hu, please feel free to hang around for as long as you wish. However... It would be best if you step outside this room. A doctor must be able to focus when treating a patient. Any distractions heighten the risk of complications. Yes, of course, absolutely. I'll just go and look at the flowers or something. But I will be back in an instant at the first sign that something's amiss. See you tomorrow, Baiju and Chang Chang. <sighs> Bye for now, everyone. Are you ready, Baiju? Ready as I'll ever be. I'm used to it by now. Come on, let's get started. <sighs> All's well that ends well, huh? You know, Paimon's kind of curious after hearing Baiju mention those people from his past. What do you think they were like? Yeah, you must be curious too, right? Let's go see what we can find out while Baiju's busy treating Ayu's dad! While I'm idling time on admiring the scenery, the spectacled snake-bedecked docks doing surgery, Hello, you busy bees, and what do you have to discuss with the funeral director today? Actually, don't tell me. Let me guess. Hmm, from the looks on your faces, you've got some questions for me. <laughs> Guilty as charged. So, um, we were just a little curious about Baiju's master. What was he like? Oh, and also... How come you and Baiju could tell so quickly that Jia Liang had god remains in his system? Huh? I thought I told you once before. Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor was first founded to fight back against the vengeful wrath of gods defeated in war. <laughs> well, it is a dusty old tale by this point. Long story short, in the ancient world, dead gods were acting up. So our ancestors started purifying the air and burning the bodies of the deceased to guard the border between life and death. These days, we don't deal with the wrath of the gods anymore, but all the relevant know-how is still passed down to each generation, so we can identify gods' remains when we see them. Okay, Paimon gets it now. Wait, so how did Baiju learn to spot them? Almost certainly from his master who was also my great-uncle. Baiju's master was my grandpa's younger brother, a former deputy director of Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. Wow, fancy that! Huh. Uh, so, if he was from Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor, how'd he end up as Baiju's master? According to my grandpa, he and my great-uncle once went traveling together when they were young. They ended up at Chen Yu Vale, where they met a pharmacist. That pharmacist must have cast 
some sort of spell on my great uncle. Because after that encounter, he suddenly announced he wanted to leave the family business and go practice medicine instead. My grandpa had a huge argument with him, but he couldn't convince him to stay. So my grandpa inherited the funeral parlor, while my great uncle stayed in Chen Vale to practice medicine. They never spoke to each other again. Funeral director to doctor is a pretty big career change. Kinda hard to imagine. But why did it drive a wedge between them for the rest of their lives? That seems a bit extreme. If he had just become a regular doctor, there would have been no issue. After all, the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor wasn't unlike a regular doctor's clinic in the early days. But according to my grandpa, the pharmacist they met had a very ominous aura about him. And on top of that, the kind of medicine practiced in the Chen Yu Veil tradition goes against the natural order of things. In what way? Don't know. My grandpa didn't know the specifics. And you've seen how wary Baiju is around me. He'd never tell me anything. But even that says to me that he definitely has something to hide. One thing I do know about Baiju is that he's obsessed with the idea of immortality. But whether that has anything to do with what he's hiding is hard to say. Anyway, so I will be sticking around here for now to keep a close eye on the situation. Maybe tomorrow I'll finally figure out what he's up to. After all that, it seems like we have more questions than answers. Never mind. We'll just have to ask Baiju himself about all of this tomorrow. Oh, uh, while you're here, have either of you seen Chi Chi around? It's not every day I get to infiltrate Baiju's lair, but alas, I didn't catch a single glimpse of her anywhere. Aha! Uh -huh. What if. Baiju knew I'd be on the lookout for her, and hid her away in advance. It's a new day! Let's go back- Dad! Uh, huh? Oh. Are you? Dad, you remember me! Yes, I remember now. Oh, are you? I'm so sorry. You must have been worried sick. Has your mom shown up yet? She's been gone for a while, hasn't she? Don't worry, Dad. I got the Adventurer's Guild to help us look for her. And Dr. Baiju's gonna help too. Right now, all you need to do is concentrate on getting better. Great. That's wonderful. I can't thank you enough, Dr. Baiju. My pleasure, really. It's the least I can do to honor my late master's dying wish. If anything, I should be apologizing to you for not making the time to visit in all these years. <laughs> not at all, Dr. Baiju. It's only because Jiang Li... Uh... Hmm... What was her reason again? You're still in the early stages of recovery, so you'll need to take it easy for a while. Take it slowly, and try not to overexert yourself. I suggest you stay at Boo Boo Pharmacy, and rest for at least the next few days. Director Hu, do you have any further reservations about Jia Liang's condition? Hmm, it seems like the evil presence is gone after all. You really did manage to suppress it, huh? How did you accomplish this in a single night? <laughs> that would be a trade secret, I'm afraid. If that gives you any cause for concern, you may continue to monitor Jia Liang for as long as you wish. Though, I regret to say that Boo Boo Pharmacy cannot offer to reimburse Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor for any revenue lost in the meantime. Oh, come on, Baiju! I'm not that unreasonable. Ah.
Yeah. I've been stuck indoors for too long. Baiju, take me outside for some air, or I'm going to suffocate. Ah, yes, of course. Everyone, please excuse Changsheng and myself for a moment. <coughs> Suffering now, are we? Did you seriously expect to cover it up just by putting on a brave face and ignoring it? If it weren't for my quick thinking, they'd have all seen the sorry state you're in by now. <sighs> but in any case, why must you keep this a secret from everybody? You should at least share your secret with one person you trust. Who's there? Why did you follow us here? Oh, <laughs> it's nothing. I just needed to get some air. <coughs> what did I just say about putting on a brave face? <sighs> Traveler, Paimon, the truth is, Baiju did not cure Jia Liang's illness. Instead, he transferred some of his own life force to his patient to temporarily subdue the poison in his system. <sighs> Baiju, can you please explain all of this? My predecessors in medicine forged a contract with Changsheng. Every successor to this contract is able to use Changsheng's secret art to treat patients. I believe the irregularities with Jia Liang's heart meridian were likely caused by a poison concocted using god remains as a key ingredient. The poison has not been purged from Jia Liang's system. Rather, I infused him with some of my own life force, using Changsheng as the delivery medium. This will suppress the poison's effects, for a limited time. Changsheng? You can do that? Huh. Paimon always thought you were just Baiju's strange choice of a necklace. Hey, I'll have you know that I commanded the respect of even the Adepti back in Chenyu Vale. If anything, he is my mannequin. I was treating patients with Baiju's master's master long before he ever set eyes on his first medical text. Whoa. Guess you shouldn't judge a snake by its skin. Please, that's enough. <coughs> <coughs> Wait a sec. Huto was saying that the branch of medicine you studied uses some pretty dubious methods. So, when you transfer your life force, does that mean you're actually damaging your own body? Hardly. <laughs> Changsheng helps to keep my chi in balance, so there is no great harm done. Still, Baiju's life force is not unlimited. He must find a way to neutralize the poison in Jia Liang's body. And soon. Traveler, Paimon, would you lend this dummy a hand? He needs someone checking up on him, or he'll exhaust himself trying to accomplish everything on his own. <sighs> Baiju, don't you think you should seize this opportunity? You cannot expect to hide this from everyone for your entire life. Time will see that all secrets surface eventually. Entire life. Thank you, Traveler and Paimon. Huh. Paimon doesn't think we've seen this side of you. But there's no need to thank us. You've helped us out before. The poison in Jia Liang's system must have accumulated over a prolonged period. I think I should pay a visit to their family home and look for clues as to how he might have been exposed to it. Yes, I asked Ayu this morning before you arrived. He told me that his family lives in a secluded spot to the west of Qingsa village. Let's head there together once I've asked Gui and Chi Chi to look after the pharmacy. As well as investigating Jia Liang's exposure to the poison, we should also keep an eye out for Ayu's missing mother, my fellow disciple, Jiang Li. Hidden, Paimon. 
Everyone's never noticed it before. Nor have I. And I've hosted clinics at Qingsa Village many times in the past, if you ask me. Jiang Li was trying to remain unnoticed. Oh, that reminds Paimon. We meant to ask earlier, but it slipped our minds in the rush to get here. Could you tell us more about Jiang Li? You said she was your fellow disciple, right? She was indeed. We studied medicine together under the same master near Chen Yu Vale. She is several years older than I and also began her travels far earlier than me. As a result, the time I spent studying alongside her was rather short. Supposedly, she met an herb gatherer sometime during her travels and decided to settle down with him. That must have been Jia Liang. Wait, Changsheng, are you saying neither of you had actually met Jia Liang or Ayu before all of this? Jiang Li did occasionally come back to Chen Yu Vale to see our master, but for whatever reason, she hardly ever talked about her family. The last time she visited us, she and master had some sort of quarrel. We never heard from her after that. It almost seemed as if she'd gone into hiding. Quarrel? What happened? I don't know. I did not witness the argument myself. Nor did Master ever explain it to me. All he would say is that should I ever encounter Jiang Li or her family in the future, I should do everything in my power to help them. Oh, so that's why you went to such extreme lengths to help Jia Liang. No. Even if my master had never said anything, it would still be my duty as a doctor to help him. My decision would have remained the same. Paimon <sighs> never knew you were so selfless, Baiju. Paimon always had you down as the sneaky, scheming type. Sorry. <laughs> so a few words from me is enough to dispel all your suspicions, hmm? You ought not be quite so quick to relax your guard, Paimon. Sometimes even the good guys have their own private agenda. What the... Okay, that was the most suspicious sounding thing you've ever said! <laughs> Let's leave the idle chatter there for now, hmm? Jiang Li has lived in this house for many years. There must be something here that can shed a little light on this whole situation. Let's split up. But if anyone finds anything, we'll examine it together. Changsheng and I found a hidden compartment. This is what was hidden inside. Ah, huh. you sense it too? You're right. This is a poison concocted using god remains. Uh, is it? Breathing? Paimon's not seeing things, is she? No. Your eyes do not deceive you. I do believe the poison in this bottle is... alive. Some toxins act a lot like living organisms. I read about this once in the origins and symptoms of diseases. This ancient class of poisons consists of mother and minor loads, capable of sustaining a connection over vast distances. If it's a concoction of this kind we're dealing with, then both the poison in Jia Liang's system and this one here are likely minor loads. Offshoots, essentially. Offshoots? So... The main body is somewhere else? Correct. Whoever is administering the poison can manipulate the source to indirectly control the poisoned individual's behavior and even cognition. 
Similarly, the poisoned individual will hear, to a varying extent, the call of the source. The call of the... Wait, so back when Jia Liang ran off, maybe that explains where he was heading! Only one thing could have been drawing him there. The source of the god remains used as the poison's key ingredient, the mother load. Ugh, this is getting crazier and crazier. What kind of person would do all this just to poison Jia Liang? <clears throat> hey, why has everyone gone quiet all of a sudden? Since this poison was carefully hidden away in this secret compartment, the one who concocted it is likely a resident of the house. You mean, Jia Liang? Why would he poison himself? Think a little harder, Paimon. Someone else who lives here, and who might have expertise in crafting drugs. Huh? So you're saying... <gasps> it was Jiang Li? Wait, but that doesn't make any sense either. Why would she poison her own husband? I agree. It makes little sense. Jiang Li does not strike me as the kind of person who would do such a thing. Look at the facts, though. How many people in the entirety of Li Yue have the ability to concoct a poison from god remains? Hmm. It's too early to draw any conclusions. We should question Jia Liang about it once he has made more progress in his recovery. Yes. According to the origins and symptoms of diseases, the minor loads will disappear if the mother load is purged. So if we can find and destroy the source of these god remains, the poison will leave Jia Liang's system without the need for any further treatment. Do you know anything about god remains in Qingsa village? <sighs> Even the history books have no record of this. The only ones who'll know anything are those old fogies who have been hanging around here since the beginning of time. Hmm. Didn't you used to be on good terms with the Adepti, though? You sure they didn't tell you anything about this? Well, uh... <clears throat> Changsheng's memories and powers are not what they were in her prime. These days, she has to enter a contract with a mortal and share their life force just to sustain her own life. I fear that such ancient events are long gone from her memory by now. Whoa, what? After a contract? Share life force? Sounds like some pretty spooky sorcery if you ask Paimon. Hey, plenty of people would jump at the chance to join forces with a powerful being like me. With my assistance in rebalancing your chi, not only can you extend your lifespan, but you will also be stronger, healthier, and able to eat whatever you like with no risk of upsetting your stomach. Stronger and healthier? Wow, that's amazing! Uh, Baiju, maybe when you retire, you can let Paimon sign a contract with Changsheng for a few days. <laughs> Unfortunately, Changsheng's contract has strict requirements regarding the host's temperament. None of her hosts have ever been exempted from these rules. I fear that I will be unable to accommodate your wishes, Paimon. Temperament? Uh, hey! What are you trying to say? Did you just subtly insult Paimon to her face? Nicknames, both of you! Baiju, you're mannequin man! Chung Chung, you're just a pain in the neck! This is exactly why your natural temperament makes you woefully unsuited to being my host. All right, everybody, calm down. Back to the matter at hand. Is there any way at all for us to seek counsel from the Adepti about this? Huh. With how antisocial they are? If it were up to them, they'd go their whole lives without showing their faces to the common folk. What? <laughs> Seems you're as well connected as they say, Traveler. We are truly fortunate to have you on our side. Oh, if you're talking about who Paimon thinks you're talking about, you better do the honors.
You called? Time. Uh, aren't all Adepti in the habit of materializing out of thin air like this? Well, this is unexpected. Huh? It's you. Baiju of Boo Boo Pharmacy. I do believe I've had the pleasure before. The Lantern Rite, when we met briefly, I was unaware of your true identity. I must apologize for the discourtesy. Huh? You two already know each other? Our paths have crossed once before. I sense the presence of evil spirits. Is this why you called me? Hmm. So someone has been concocting demonic poison. Too often, fervent desires drive mortals to abandon all regard for their own safety. It is lamentable. I now know what you seek. It is true that a god's remains are buried beneath the foundations of Chinksa village. A vile monster known as the Chu once wrought havoc over this land, before it was subdued by Rex Lapis. The land was finally cleansed of poison when Rex Lapis used statues in his likeness to seal the serpent's remains. Chinksa village was founded some time after that. The seal is still mostly intact. If the Chu is the source, then it must be some of its blood leaking from deep underground. However, its aura is faint and barely detectable. You will need to investigate further to identify the location of the leak. I do not like to intervene against mortals unless absolutely necessary. But when demonic forces are involved, things can spiral out of control. If that happens, be sure to call my name again. Hmm. Hmm? Nothing. I do not wish to sway decisions that are mortals to make, but... Immortality may not be the blessing that you imagine it to be. I shall treasure your words of instruction, Master Adeptus. Farewell. What a strange Adeptus. Rather different from the way I remember them. That's you! And thanks to him, we finally got some concrete info to go off of. If the god remains are leaking from underground, Jiang Li must be paying a visit to a subterranean cave on her herb gathering trips. Hmm. If we can find the cave. Ma master! Master! There's a problem! Gwei? Did you run all the way from Boo Boo Pharmacy? What happened? Don't panic. Just catch your breath, and tell me everything. It's... it's Jialyang. He was... he was fine one minute, and then he suddenly took a turn for the worse. Already? How? Based on past experience, he should have been fine for the next three days at least. It seems that my worst fears have been confirmed. Everyone, back to Boo Boo Pharmacy now! Dad, what's wrong? Don't be scared. Dr. Baishu will be back soon. How is he doing? Dr. Baishu, you're back. My dad was doing fine earlier, but then he suddenly started coughing up blood. Now he can't even get a full word out anymore. When Gwei left, he was still conscious. But now... Gwei, please take Jia Liang to the back room and prepare for treatment. Yes, of course. Don't worry, Ayu. I will cure your father. Baiju's not gonna use Chang Sheng's secret art again, is he? Is there really no other way to save Jia Liang? Oh, please don't worry. Dr. Baiju will find a way. But... but... How are you?
are you feeling, Dad? Are you still hurting anywhere? You're not gonna suddenly collapse again, are you? Ah, much better, Ayu. I'm feeling much better. In fact, I can't explain it, but somehow I feel even better than usual. Hmm. Wait, where's Dr. Baiju? I still haven't had a chance to thank him. Seems he moved me here before I came to. Master said he needed to take a quick rest and asked me to bring you out of the treatment room. He hasn't emerged yet, so he must still be resting. Oh, really? Well, he must be tired from treating me for two nights in a row. <sighs> I don't know how I can begin to repay him for saving my life. I'll have to discuss it properly with Jiang Li once we find her. Hmm. Speaking of which, uh, has there been any word of her whereabouts yet? No, the Adventurer's Guild hasn't gotten back to me yet. I'll go check with them again in a bit. I'll come with... <sighs> Don't forget what Master said. You're still not out of the woods yet, Jia Liang. I strongly suggest that you stay and rest at Bubu Pharmacy for now. I can accompany Ayu to the Adventures Guild. <sighs> I suppose you're right. I'll have to rely on you this time. Though, on the bright side, this means I can thank Dr. Baiju in person once he's finished resting. Traveler, Baiju hasn't shown his face ever since he went in to treat Kia Liang again. Do you think he... You're finally awake? <sighs> that was far too risky. Even with me here to help you balance your chi. There was no time. I had no other choice. In any case, it was not completely without benefit to myself. I managed to learn something. Jiang Li's design is quite brilliant. She makes numerous innovations that I can learn from. Alas, if only there wasn't a catch. So, how much longer do you think Baiju's gonna nap for? They've been outside waiting for you the whole time while you were asleep. Shall we at least go and show our faces? <sighs> Alright. Surely he hasn't. There's no way he could have just... Who's talking behind our backs again? Ah! Baiju! Changsheng! <sighs> of course. There's no need to be concerned. I merely had to transfer a rather large amount of life force on this occasion. But, with Changsheng's help, I will recover in time. Jia Liang seemed fine yesterday. Why did he need more life-saving treatment again so soon? I... made an error in my initial diagnosis. Jia Liang is in fact suffering from more than one ailment. And as a result, his life force depleted at a greater rate than I had anticipated. What? You mean, even if you got all the poison out of him, he'd still be sick? Yes. But more pertinently, the poison in Jia Liang's system is there precisely because it is being used to manage his underlying medical condition. Jia Liang has a rare congenital heart condition, and ongoing treatment is essential to maintaining healthy functioning of his heart meridian. Left untreated, it puts the patient at risk of coughing up blood and fainting, and in the longer term, causes irreversible damage to the internal organs. Though it was created from God Remains, this formula is not a poison in Jia Liang's case. Rather, it's his medication. Had he not taken it all these years, he likely would have died a long time ago. Still, using poison to treat a disease is hardly a viable long-term solution. As time passed, and the poison accumulated in his system, it began to impact his cognition. Moreover, the longer he relied upon this medicine,
the more resistant his body became to it. Jiang Li had to concoct ever greater quantities to ensure its continued efficacy, or he could have still perished at any moment. That explains why Ayu said his dad has been giving worse, and why his mom went off to gather herbs. God remains are extremely dangerous to be around, because humans have no natural defense against them. I shudder to think how many times Jiang Li has exposed herself to them. I fear that the situation is just as that adeptus described. In an effort to save Jia Liang's life, Jiang Li has abandoned all regard for her own safety. I never suspected that even Jiang Li would turn to the same path as so many others over the years. Perhaps this is the inevitable course of fate. To sacrifice one's own life to save others. To go beyond human means in order to do the impossible. Whatever the cost may be. Well, I think that it's too early to say with any certainty what fate has in mind. In any case, I have stabilized Jia Liang's condition for now. So our immediate priority should be to get ourselves back to Qingsa village and find out where Jiang Li is. Her regular exposure to God remains over such a long period will have been catastrophic for her health. And given that she's already been missing for several days, I am fearing the worst. It's me, Traveler, Dr. Baiju. You overheard everything already. Dr. Baiju, please let me come with you. You've already done so much for my family. I can no longer just sit here and watch while you put yourself at risk for Jiang Li's sake. After all, if it wasn't for me, she wouldn't have had to put herself in harm's way in the first place. I know I won't be of much help in battle, but at the very least, I can show you the way. I'm sure I'll be able to remember. I know there's a spot where she says goodbye to me every time she goes to gather her herbs. I'm sure I'll remember. I, I have to remember. <coughs> be careful. If you get too agitated, your blood pressure and stress levels will rise, putting further pressure on your heart. For your own safety, you should stay here and rest. No! We're out of time! We have to go now. Right now. Before I forget everything again. This trip will be extremely dangerous. And there is a very real possibility that you will not return from it. Are you sure you're prepared for that? <laughs> I never expected to live this long in the first place. My death is already long overdue. So why should I fear it? There's only one thing I fear now. And that's that I'll forget her again before we manage to find her. Very well. Then follow me. Dr. Baiju? Are you heading out again? Yes. This could be a long one. Could you please prepare a dose of the usual formula? Please add an extra measure of mist grass pollen and one dose each of the ingredients from the third and fifth compartments of my medicine cabinet. I hope it works. Uh, Dr. Baishu, do you mean... Pop to it now. And remember to be careful with the cauldron this time. You don't want to burn yourself again. Okay. <laughs> that strange feeling is back. It's just like the day I went missing. It's as if something inside me is trying to guide me somewhere.
The mother lode's influence is growing stronger. But is it because we're getting closer to the source? Or because the leakage of Che blood is growing more severe? Jia Liang, can you sense which direction the source is in? I think it's uh, this way. Yes, I'm sure of it. I feel a dull ache in my heart. <sighs> this must be the way. <coughs> this place feels familiar. I, I think I've been here before. Hmm. There is an inauspicious presence here. Even I can sense it. I think I remember this place. Jia <sighs> Liang, are you okay? Uh, maybe you should rest here while we continue the search. No, I have to keep going. Jiang Li is still waiting for me. <sighs> then let's hurry. on the creeps. Who knows what we're gonna find up ahead? The digging marks here appear amateur and rather old. I suspect it is a thieves' tunnel. A thieves' tunnel? Hmm. Paimon has heard rumors about treasure around these parts before. Maybe it was the treasure hoarders that dug this tunnel. Judging by the tools they left behind, it's certainly a possibility. But why did they abandon this place without even stopping to pack up their tools? Ah, I remember now. She took me here once and told me that she found a way to save me in this cave. But she... Uh, she said that the method would cause me to... Uh, 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 curses! Why can't I remember what she said? Uh, Easy, Jia Liang. Come on. Let's keep going. here. Those treasure hoarders sure made themselves at home. I believe this sensor was used to burn a monster repelling incense. A monster repelling incense? Are uh, you sure? Because we did run into that group of monsters just now. The incense was burned several days ago. If I had to guess, the monsters we fought just now were enticed here by some entity deeper inside the cave. No doubt an encounter with the very same entity was what prompted the treasure hoarders to flee and abandon their designs on this cave. After them, Jiang Li was the next person to discover this place and what lies inside. But to her, it presented an opportunity to save Jia Liang's life, albeit as a last resort. That's right. This sensor, it belongs to Jiang Li. Yes, this was the place. This is where I tell Jiang Li to give me the poison. <coughs> Jiang Liang! I'm fine. Let's keep going. I can feel it. She, she, she is right below us, waiting for me. Uh, 
can feel it. We're getting close. We're almost there. It's right up ahead. The place where we made a pact together to... Aha! Uh -huh. We can keep going now! From the looks of it, the energy released by this mechanism can not only clear barriers, but also be conducted by corresponding mechanisms. Perhaps it's something we can make use of. Solidify! Look out! Uh, she's a monster next to her! The god remains must have lured them here. Watch my back. <laughs> Mind the side effects. You. How serious is it? Is she... I can still feel a pulse, but her condition is quite grave. The god remains here are encroaching on her cognition, much as the poison in your system did to you. If we don't eliminate it soon, then even if we save her life, I fear that she may never wake up again. Then what are we waiting for? Let's destroy the remains right away! It's not as simple as that. Don't you remember what Baiju said? The poison within Jialyang's body is inextricably linked to the god remains here. If the source is purged, the poison in his system will stop having any effect. Uh, and the poison within Jialyang's body is keeping his heart condition under control. So, 
if it stops working. Oh no. Are you saying... Indeed. If the god remains here are purged, then your life will come to an end. <sighs> I wondered when this day might come. Wait, wait, wait! But we've all been working our butts off to save Tia Liang's life! After all that, we can't just give up on him! Baiju, you're a great doctor! Surely you've got to know of some other way we can save him, right? You could continue to take the poison, which would buy you some time. As for Jiang Li, maybe if we put our heads together, we can think of something? It appears to me that she was striving to concoct her medicine for you, right up until the moment when she lost consciousness. Maybe it's her greatest wish that you will continue to take it and live. Dr. Baiju, give it to me straight. How long does Jiang Li have? The god remains have reached her internal organs. Under ordinary circumstances, I would give her less than three days. But, if I were to treat her using a secret art... But, but what would be the point of that? Dr. Baiju, I'm all too aware of the dangers of god remains. You were not the first to mention it to me. If I continue to sustain my own life using this wretched substance, not only would Jiang Li have to keep risking her life to make my medicine for me, oh, but I would have to live with the looming threat of these remains breaking out and wreaking havoc not just upon me, but my entire family. I know for a fact that I should have died over a decade ago. The fact that I've been around to see how you grow up is already a great blessing from Rex Lapis. If my choice can bring Jiang Li back, then even if I, uh, uh, even if I die. Jia Liang. <laughs> After cheating death for so long, it seems I've grown somewhat addicted to life. <sighs> Traveler, Dr. Baiju, could I have another minute with my wife? I just want to have one final moment together. Just a moment, that's all. Of course. Thank you, everyone. And I'm sorry that I won't be able to repay your kindness in this life. Jia <laughs> Liang, Baiju, Changsheng, is there really nothing else you can do? I am sure that over the years, Jiang Li will have tried all the conventional methods known to humankind. As for less conventional methods, I have little expertise besides Changsheng's secret art. Mortals are fated to grow old and pass on when their natural lifespan runs out. If it were so easy to combat the natural processes of aging and death, Jiang Li would not have had to resort to unnatural methods. What a crazy situation! Jiang Li risked it all to save Jia Liang's life. And now, Jia Liang has to sacrifice himself to save Jiang Li. What's the point of it all? I've seen many final farewells in my time, but I can never get used to it. In the human realm, all things must come to an end. Is it not a fitting end to die for a worthy cause? At least, that's what generations of masters before you have always believed. The path they chose was indeed a heroic one. But when I think of those who would willingly sacrifice themselves for others, I cannot help but think that theirs are the lives least deserving of death. When all this began, we agreed that once Ayu was old enough to help you gather herbs, it would be time for me to go. <laughs> If you could only see him now. He took me all the way to Liyue Harbor to see the doctor. And he even got the adventurer's guild to search for you. <laughs> so I know that you'll both be okay without me. <clears throat> I've said my goodbyes. My time has come. Do what you must. As you wish.
It will eat away at both your cognition and your memories. In the end, you'll become little more than a shadow of your true self. I'll take it. At the very least, it will allow me to stay with you and watch how you grow up. <laughs> Mom, something's really wrong with Dad. Don't fret, Ayu. I will gather some medicinal herbs right away. I promise you, nothing will happen to our family. <clears throat> Why would these memories come to mind now? <sighs> the longer we live, the tighter... We cling to what we have. Oh, how I would love to hear, to hear your voice one last time. Jia Liang. Jia Liang. Jia Liang! Jia Liang! Dad, are you awake? Uh, Jiang Li, are you? Didn't I... Huh? What are these? How does it feel to come back to life? Do you feel strange or different in any way? If so, could you describe it to me in detail? Dr. Baishu, I... I thought that I was going to... <laughs> Die? You did indeed. As things stand now, you're more akin to a zombie than a human. I'm a zombie? That's right. Before we set off, I asked Chi-Chi to prepare an elixir of immortality. With its help, you have been suspended in the space between life and death. Of course... This is but a crude imitation of an adeptus art. I don't expect it to extend your life indefinitely. Whether it will keep you alive for a few days, a few months, or a few years, I am as interested as you to find out. But, however long you have left, I believe it should be more than sufficient time for you to say your final goodbyes before departing the world in peace. I hope that Director Hu finds this arrangement to be a satisfactory one. An elixir of immortality? How'd you cook that up? Oh, leave it to you to work on something like that behind my back. It's a work in progress that hardly lives up to its name, and it would have had no effect were it not for Jia Liang's iron will. In the end, I am merely a doctor. I understand very little of the great principles governing life and death and the perpetual cycle of yin and yang. All I know is that if I'm presented with a life that deserves to be saved, I will do everything in my power to save them. And even this would have counted for nothing without Director Hu's assistance. After all, did you not tell Jia Liang to show us the way before we set off for Chingsa Village? Oops. And I'm busted. Without Director Hu nudging things in the right direction, we may not have found Jiang Li in time. No wonder he didn't mention the elixir back then. I thought he was being frank and transparent with me for once, but apparently not. <clears throat> Director Hu told me to keep her suggestion a secret, but it seems nothing escapes Dr. Baiju's attention. <laughs> Never underestimate a serpent's sense of smell. <sighs> All I wanted was to help Jia Liang find his missing wife as soon as possible so that he could be on his way to the afterlife without any unfulfilled wishes making the journey more difficult than it needs to be. Leave it to Boo Boo Pharmacy to snatch the perfect opportunity right out of my hands at the last hurdle. Never mind. I'll just have to put it down in the books as a deferred consideration. <sighs> one Chi-Chi was enough of a conundrum. The last thing I need's another one. If I'd known this was coming, I'd have whisked him off to the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor the moment I found him. You stay away from my dad! When I grow up, I'm gonna become an even better doctor than Mom and Baiju! And cure Dad for good! Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, is that right? 
Well, you wouldn't be the first person who's tried to put Wangsheng Funeral Parlor out of business. If you're serious about it, you'll have your work cut out for you. Traveler, Paimon, I'll catch you all another time. Oh, is she finally gone? All's well that ends well. If you ask Paimon, we should probably do something to celebrate this hard-earned family reunion. <laughs> At times like this, a grand celebratory feast is in order. <laughs> it feels like it was a whole lifetime ago when I last talked with Zhongli and Ayu around the dinner table. Yay! Paimon can't wait! All right, first things first, off to the market for some fresh ingredients. Let's go! Wait up! I'll come too! Baiju, thank you so, so much for everything you've done for us. Don't mention it, Jiangli. I was just doing my duty. Just your duty, huh? <sighs> Baiju, Changsheng, would you mind if we took this conversation outside? Now that you are part zombie, there are some rules that you need to know. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm listening. First, don't forget to stretch your body regularly. Second, don't forget to... Uh, yes? Go on. Don't forget to... <sighs> I forgot... I've taken a look at your elixir of immortality. It's not altogether dissimilar from the poison I concocted in terms of the way it functions. I have to say, Jiangli, it was a stroke of genius to use poison to maintain life. I hope you're not too upset at me for copying your methods. No, not at all. With your intellect, even if you'd never seen my poison, I believe you would have eventually arrived at the same approach. But I'm still impressed by how quickly you managed to gain such a thorough understanding of it. Jia Liang's still only been in your care for a few days. Not just that. You even managed to improve upon the original formula. That cannot be explained by intellect alone. Baiju, be honest with me. Did you try out some of the poison on yourself? Huh. Told you the truth would surface sooner or later. Life force isn't the only thing that Changsheng's contract lets you transfer between bodies. Is it? Nothing gets past you, Jiang Li. You are correct. Besides life force, Changsheng's secret art also allows for the transfer of toxins and diseases. When I treated Jia Liang for the second time, I transferred some of the poison from his body into my own. Not only did this allow me to alleviate the burden on him, but it also gave me an opportunity to study its properties. There is no need to worry about any long-term consequences to my health, however. Now that the source has been destroyed, any remaining poison in me will have already dissipated. But you took such a huge risk. If we hadn't destroyed the gods' remains back there, then even you might have... <sighs> what am I saying? I'm in no position to criticize you for this. The reason I left our master and went into hiding all those years ago was that he was getting old, and I didn't want him using up any more of his own life force to treat my husband. But in the end, how were my methods any different? I risked one life to save another, and then you tried the poison on yourself too. <sighs> it looks like both of us have ended up going the same way as our master before us. Are all disciples of Chen Yu Vale destined to turn out this way? To live a short life, having given away our own for the sake of others? 
to fight relentlessly against the natural course of life and death, whatever the cost. <sighs> Maybe our fate is sealed the moment we decide to study medicine. We are doctors, Jiang Li. We ought never say that anyone's fate is sealed. Baiju, I can tell that over the years, you've used the contract with Changsheng to transfer many diseases and toxins to yourself. There are so many that some of them I don't even recognize. Can you still stop before it's too late? I think you know the answer, Jiang Li. Every one of us from Chen Yu Vale believes in the same thing. Hey, food's ready! Mom, come and join us. The traveler taught me a load of new recipes and said even Dad will be able to taste them. Come and try them out. Yes, darling. Mom will be there in just a second. Hey, slow down. Baiju. I know I won't be able to convince you, but please don't forget that if one day you're not around anymore, Chi-Chi, Gui, and all the friends who have grown fond of you, they will all miss you dearly. There's no need to worry, Jiang Li. I know what I'm doing. <sighs> I can only hope so. Hmm. You. What did Jiang Li mean by not around anymore? Are you gonna be okay? Every single mortal I've ever contracted with, including Baiju and Jiang Li's master, has passed away at a young age. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. You said that the contract with you helps people live longer. <sighs> It is a very long story. Long ago, when plagues ravaged the land, one doctor made a pledge to rid the world of pain and suffering. But even the most ingenious mortal medicine could not stay the tide of disease. And after working tirelessly for many years, even his dearest loved ones fell sick and bade their final farewell. Legends told of an herb lord in Chen Yu Vale who could cure any illness known to mankind. The doctor sought the herb lord, but found only a white snake, its breathing weak and its power all but spent. Sign this contract and let our lives be joined. Then I will impart to you the secret art of healing. But be warned, this art will harm your own health. With means beyond human ken, the doctor could now reverse the process of death. And yet, the time still came to say goodbye. Only now, the one departing was the doctor, his life force spent. His final act in life was to pass on the contract to his final patient, his favorite disciple. The disciple chose to dedicate their life to saving the lives of others. And generation upon generation followed in these footsteps. <coughs> Since I inherited this contract, I've always respected the path taken by my predecessors and followed it myself unquestioningly. That is, until I tried to use the art to save my own disciples, beloved. She begged me not to use up my own life force. She said that this art is a poison chalice, an evil and unnatural practice. She did not wish to sacrifice one life for the sake of another, when both were lives she treasured. Only then did it occur to me. Did I not suffer when my master passed away, just as patients' families do at their loved one's deathbed? 
are not the lives cut short by this contract just as worthy of saving as any patients? What is this contract to us? Medicine or poison? Alas, I no longer have enough time left to find the answer. I entrust to your care both Chang Sheng and this final question. May you find a remedy for this conundrum which has ailed us so. Time and again, no matter how much I try to warn them or balance their chi, I can never save them. And you? What's your answer? If I abandoned the contract and left you without a host, what would happen? Hmm. I suppose I'd spend my final moments taking a nice nap on Mount Yaojin. Then I'd be reunited with my old friends and your predecessors. Then it's decided. If there's a life in front of me that deserves to be saved, why shouldn't I do everything within my power to save it? <sighs> Once again, it's the same answer. So be it. Close your eyes. Who knows how many more people will take on this contract? None. This contract will end with me. contract has strict requirements on the host's natural temperament. All my hosts have been most pure of heart. But when one with an altruistic nature gains access to this art, they are more seduced than the average person by the miracle of overturning the laws of life and death. Though they know better than anyone else the fate that awaits them, when faced with the sorrows of humanity and the pain of losing their nearest and dearest, they cannot help but reach beyond human means. They are like moths that throw themselves into the flame, seeking a glimmer of hope in a dark world filled with pain and suffering. So, by you, does that mean... <laughs> I suppose that would make me a moth that yearns for the light, but doesn't want to be burned to a crisp. Cheng Sheng's art can transfer pain and suffering between people, but it cannot reduce the total amount of pain in the world. It's just like we witnessed. Either Jia Liang feared for Jia Li's life, or Jia Li grieved over Jia Liang's sacrifice. I have nothing but the utmost respect for my predecessors, who sacrificed their lives for their principles. But I do not wish to join their ranks nor do I wish to pass on this contract to anyone else in the future. Huh? But didn't you already transfer a ton of diseases onto yourself? What makes a poison, poison? And what makes a disease, a disease? When it comes down to it, are not both mechanisms that affect the operations of the human body? If disease is defined as deviation from normal functioning, then who knows? Perhaps the true elixir of immortality could in fact be a kind of poison. Many may view the notion of searching for immortality in poisons and illnesses as a flagrant violation of the natural order. But to me, it is no different from the way our ancestors tested the medicinal qualities of herbs by sampling each and every one. I don't want those who come after me to lose their lives to this contract. Nor do I wish for Cheng Sheng to perish from losing her host. This leaves only one solution, doesn't it? Precisely. I will be Cheng Sheng's final host, and the tradition of passing down the contract will end with me. Even the gods of old struggle to achieve true immortality. First you want to save others, then you want to save yourself. Now you even want to save me. You're getting greedy, Baiju. Hmm... But isn't wanting to have it all what makes us human? For a selfish moth like me, who's afraid of the flame yet yearns for the light, the only path forward is up towards the moon. Huh. For once, Paimon just does not know what to say. Dr. Baiju, Traveler! What are you still chatting about? The food's about to get cold. 
We also have coconut milk for Changsheng and Paimon. Um, okay, fine. Let's go grab some food. Paimon has a bunch of burning questions, but they can wait till after we've eaten. I do envy Paimon sometimes. Eating her fail is enough to satisfy her body and mind. <laughs> True. And yet, although we call them simple pleasures, are such things as these not precisely why we mortals cling desperately to the life we have? <laughs> 